Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so today we are gonna see, what if Naruto can access powers of all 9 beast, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. A small boy was running through the streets being chased by an angry crowd of villagers, this boy was 6 year old Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto had blonde hair, blue eyes, whisker marks on his cheeks, and black rings around his eyes like a raccoon. He never knew why the villagers hated him or why they called him a demon, so he just tried to block them out. Right now he was running for his life from some drunk civilians, today was October 10th, Naruto's birthday. What he didn't know was that he had a secret that started the day he was born, six years ago. Six years earlier. This secret Naruto didn't even know started six years ago, when the Kaiubi attacked his village. The fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, was just about to seal the Kaiubi. I'm going to seal the Kaiubi into Naruto. It's our only chance Minato said sadly to his wife Kashina Yuzumaki, who just minutes earlier had the mighty beast extracted from her. No. Why? Why not someone else's baby Kashina said she knew of the treatment in Chiriki felt, the hateful glares and loneliness. I can't ask for another baby and we have to do this now Minato said sadly. Minato then put baby Naruto into a small crib, the sealing crib used to seal Biju. Is he really going to seal me again inside that little brat? No, I can't let this happen Kaiubi thought, trying to find something to stop him. Maybe if Naruto were to die. Flashback. Shukaku, Matatabi, Isobu, Son Goku, Kakuo, Seiken, Chimei, Jayuki, Kurama. Remember, even when you are apart you will always be together, one day you will be together again, and I hope that person leads you down the right path. A man with a monk staff and spiky hair, said before falling to the ground, dead. Flashback end. Maybe I can pull them in with me and kill the brat from Chakra Overload, I'll be free again, Kaiubi thought evilly, he would put his plan into action, but would the result be the one he expected? Okay, but please. Let me see him when he is older Kashina pleaded sadly to her husband, who was about to seal the Kaiubi. Yes, I'm going to make sure he meets us both save your Chakra, but keep Kaiubi restrained. I'll seal half the Kaiubi into me Minato said, starting a seal. Secret Hidden Jutsu. Reaper Death Seal. Minato said, sealing half the Kaiubi into himself, his body going numb. My body, it's going numb he said, fearing to die before sealing the Kaiubi. Minato then walked up to Naruto, preparing to seal the Kaiubi, what happened next no one expected. Minato made hand signs and started to gather chakra. But Saratobi and two others, an. I'm sorry I like the idea of Kakashi and Guy being the two following him, I know that's not what happened, but I like this. We have to hurry, I fear the worst. Siratobi, the retired third Hokage, said to two others following behind him. Do you think Minato sensei will be okay? A man with white hair and a mask asked worriedly. This man was Kakashi Haddock, who was assigned to be an Anbu captain. I don't know. But we need to keep moving forward. A man with a black bowl haircut and bushy eyebrows said. This man was Mike Guy, Kakashi's eternal rival. Guy is right, let's hurry up. Siratobi said, speeding up his pace. Back with Minato, Kishina, and Kaiubi. When he starts to seal me I'll drag one-fourth of my siblings into the boy too, then he'll die from chakra overload on his small body and die, I'll be released and kill everyone. Kaiubi said maliciously. 8 trigram seal. Minato said, then there was a flash of light, and Kaiubi was gone. Only Minato and Kishina noticed the eight other chakra signatures seeping into Naruto, then they fell to the ground dead. Oh, shit, was their final thought before they died. Siratobi, Guy, and Kakashi arrived on the scene after only a few seconds, if they were there seconds earlier, they would have seen that eight other chakras seeped into Naruto. Naruto wasn't dead, that they knew for sure when he started to cry. But when they saw rings form around his eyes they were concerned, what is the effect of the Kaiubi? Kakashi then picked up Naruto and cradled him in his arms, trying to calm him down, no one knew what was going on inside the seal at that moment. Inside Naruto's mind. Kaiubi had just moments earlier been sealed into Naruto, what confused him was that instead of Naruto dying, eight other cages started to form. After the cages formed one by one, Biju started to pop into the cages. One all the way to eight then looked around confused, till they saw Kaiubi with a confused expression. What the hell is going on here one, three, and four asked, slightly angry. Then all the Biju turned to Kaiubi, who seemed to be the culprit. Um well you see, I was about to get sealed, and I tried to pull you guys in to kill the brat. Somehow he survived Kaiubi said, shocking most of the others. How dare you, you stupid fox. Now we're all stuck inside this kid one yelled, causing some of the Biju to nod in angry agreement. I only pulled out one fourth of you all, but yeah, you're stuck here now. Make yourselves comfy in this kid's mind. I'm going to take a nap. Kaiubi said, disappointed his plan hadn't worked, but not wanting to deal with his angry siblings. Great, now we're screwed inside this kid's head. 
maybe we can make the best of it all the other Biju thought before also taking maps. Outside Naruto's mind. I promise to protect you, Naruto. Kakashi murmured, Guy and Siratobi still heard and smiled. Suddenly the crying stopped and Naruto slowly opened his eyes, everyone stared at the boy in Kakashi's arms in wonder. I wonder why he has rings around his eyes they all thought, then they left assuming it was the Kaiubi. Current time. Why do you hate me? Naruto yelled as he turned a corner, only finding a dead end. He started to panic, the mob was coming so he ran up the alleyway, huddled against a wall. Because you killed out families. Now we're going to kill you one of the ninja and the mob yelled. He then threw a kunai at Naruto, expecting it to hit, but sand shot up and blocked it before it could hit. Some of the villagers looks turned angrier, Naruto was known to block attacks with sand. Of course, Naruto didn't know how it happened, but he was glad it did, otherwise he might be dead by now. Then again, he did heal really fast, but would that help if he was hit through the head? Naruto continued to cower against the wall, hoping someone would save him. What do you think you're doing? A voice in front of Naruto said, Naruto looked up to see a man with white gravity-defying hair. It was Kakashi, but Naruto didn't know that. Why would you help the demon? You're brainwashed just like the third Hokage. Help us kill this scum and you'll be free one of the villagers yelled, that was Kakashi's last straw. Then a villager threw a broke bottle, which was just stopped by the sand again. Kakashi quickly ran up and killed all the people in the crowd, then rushed in front of Naruto, who was just falling down to the ground. Then he quickly uncovered his Sharingan, which he got from his late teammate, Abito. When he looked at Naruto he was always shocked at the sheer amount of chakra Naruto had, sure he had the Kaiubi, but this was ridiculous. This amount of chakra rivaled 2-3 to three Biju. Then a nagging idea went through Kakashi's head, what if he quickly watched as Naruto raised his eyes to look at him, he pushed more chakra into his eyes, then he was in the sower. In Naruto's mind. Is this Naruto's mind? I need to help him more, his mind is a sower Kakashi thought as he started making his way down the hall. After a little bit of walking he felt a powerful surge of chakra, he quickly followed the source and found himself in a large room. He looked around and gasped, in front there was one cage then to his right, and left there were four cages on each side. Slowly, all nine Bijuu stepped forward in their cages, and Kakashi nearly fainted. All nine Bijuu were standing in front of him in Naruto's own mind. What the hell is this Kakashi asked, scared for Naruto's life with nine Bijuu in him. Well no wonder he has so much chakra, he has all nine tailed beasts inside of him Kakashi thought in a deadpan tone. You are not the kid, who are you Kaiubi said, staring at Kakashi with red slitted eyes. We are all in the boy's mind, Kaiubi pulled one fourth of us all in with him when we were sealed, and now we're stuck here Matatabi tails, spitting out Kaiubi's name. H how is that even possible Kakashi said, hoping this was a dream. We're all linked, he focused on a portion of our souls and chakra, now we're here. Added up. Son Goku Tails said in a bored tone, laying on the floor of his cage. Oh does Naruto know about all of you Kakashi asked, scared for the answer. No. All the Biju answered at one time. Okay, what do you do here all day and what abilities do you give him Kakashi asked. Usually we take naps and talk argue, recently, we've been trying to force Shukaku to let the poor boy sleep Asobu said, glaring at Shukaku one cage over, causing Kakashi to sweat drop. How long has this gone on Kakashi asked, making all the Biju look at each other. One week Kaiubi said then sighed, he didn't want to argue with the others, but the kid needed sleep. Okay maybe he'll allow him to sleep later, Kakashi thought, knowing he couldn't affect a Biju in the slightest. Okay, now what are the abilities characteristics you've given him Kakashi asked, genuinely curious. I have given him control over sand and protection. Also the rings around his eyes are from me. Kaku said. I have given him some cunning, also the whiskers might be my fault. Matatabi said, embarrassed about the last part. I have given him a water affinity and slight control over water. Asobu said, with what looked like a smile on his face, which Kakashi thought looked like a perverted grin. I have given him an affinity to fire and slight control over fire. Also, if he has an affinity to earth he might be able to use lava release. Son Goku said in a matter of fact tone. I have given him some stamina, but Kurama also gave him that. Kakuo said, spitting out Kaiubi's real name, causing Kurama to growl. I have given him a small calming aura, so he can think calmly in a bad situation. Saken, said Kakashi like that ability's benefits. I have given him better vision, like a bug's but not as conspicuous. He just sees better than other kids his age. Jame said proudly. I have given him a strong confident attitude. He didn't really need it, but this way it will be harder than it was before to break him. Jayuki said knowingly. The kid really didn't need more confidence, but he never wanted to see this kid give up. I have given him fast healing, stamina, and the whiskers are possibly my fault too. Kurama said. And we have all given him chakra. They all said in unison while flaring their chakra. 
everyone then looked back to Kakashi who was stunned. The Bijuu had all given Naruto really useful abilities that even he might not have believed if he didn't hear it. I'm surprised, why would you all give Naruto these special abilities when you were sealed in him? I expected one or two of you to buy all of you Kakashi said, wondering why the Bijuu would be so generous. We want to see the kid get to live. Even us Bijuu would never treat a child like this, and you call us demons Matatabi said angrily, all the other Bijuu nodded. Unlike some of us who would stop a kid from sleeping Jayuki said, causing everyone to turn to Shukaku, who looked on the edge of sleep. Now get out Kurama yelled, wanting Kakashi out of Kit's mind. Outside Naruto's mind. Kakashi was now staring into Naruto's raccoon-like blue eyes. Naruto looked on the verge of passing out because Kakashi could see the light slowly leaving Naruto's eyes. Then he fell to the ground asleep. Well it seems Shukaku had finally let him sleep. Maybe maybe I shouldn't tell the Hokage, the council would turn him into a weapon. Oh well Doc Kakashi thought as he picked up Naruto, who had passed out from chakra exhaustion and sunshine to Naruto's apartment and laid him on the bed. He checked him over and sighed. Dust chakra exhaustion, probably from him subconsciously making that sand maybe I should get him something to carry sand in, Kakashi mused to himself as he sat and waited for Naruto to wake up. I wonder what will happen when he goes to the academy and intentionally unlocks his chakra, Kakashi continued and snickered to himself, thinking of what could possibly happen. Two hours later. Ugh what happened Naruto muttered as he sat up, feeling fully refreshed. He then turned his head and saw Kakashi sitting in a chair with a gourd at his side. You passed out from chakra exhaustion. Making more sand must take a lot of chakra don't you think Kakashi asked, and Naruto shrugged. I didn't know I was making more sand, and why do I have this power? No one else does, is that why I'm shunned Naruto asked sadly. A.N. The gourd is just like Gar as he also wears is the same way. No, that's not it you learn more when you're older. Also, I got you a present, so you don't have to make any more sand. I got you a gourd full of sand to use. Do you know how to control your sand Kakashi asked, changing the subject. Naruto nodded and propped the gourd onto his back, it was surprisingly light. How much sand is in it, and why is it so light Naruto asked Kakashi and Kakashi smiled. It has five sandboxes full, it's all sealed into seals that make more room inside of it Doc Kakashi said, chuckling at Naruto's shocked expression. And it has seals on it that lighten its overall weight, they're light training weights, but they take off more weight. Kakashi finished, close to breaking into all outfits of laughter at the expression on Naruto's face. Thank you Naruto said, running to hug Kakashi for the gift. You're welcome, Naruto, do you want to go out to Raymond? Kakashi asked, knowing it was Naruto's favorite food. Raymond Naruto screamed and ran out the door, Kakashi soon followed after. I wonder how you'll end up. Good luck, Naruto Kakashi thought, following Naruto into the Ichiraku Raymond. Two years later. It was Naruto's first day at the academy and he was extremely excited. For the past two years he had trained with his sand and also his senses like some voices in his head said. He wasn't sure where the voice came from, but maybe that was a good thing, in the past two years he would practice with his sand, then try to throw the kunai and shuriken that the man that saved him, Kakashi, bought him. He noted that he could hear multiple voices in his head, but one really stood out, it sounded more powerful than the others, and it told him to practice with everything the academy told him to. After practicing with his sand he found out why the sand could move slowly at times, if he wasn't ready to defend himself, he would immediately lose. Naruto was walking to the academy and trying to ignore the hateful glares he got, when suddenly he felt his sand shoot out of the gourd to stop something. He looked up and found that a group of adults had started to throw rocks at him. Don't you dare go to school with our kids, you demon one person yelled. Why don't you die demons come another one yelled. Now Naruto couldn't ignore it, he started to run away to the academy. When he saw it in sight and no one was following, he slowed down to a slow walk. When he finally arrived at the grounds he saw other kids arriving, some looked excited and others scared some, even smug. Then two people stood out, they had black hair and onyx black eyes. He could feel the voices in his head trying to nag him away, but he needed to go, it was his first day. So he continued walking, glancing around at all the parents telling their kids they loved them. He spotted a few who looked like shinobi, and they were not giving him a hateful glance, but curious one. He also dreadfully spotted the others who were giving him hateful glances and telling their kids to stay away from him, he guessed they were civilians. He continued to walk, ignoring the glares until he was passing the two with the black hair. One looked to be a teenager who he guessed was bringing in his little brother, who looked to be Naruto's age. Maybe he might make a friend this year, the shinobi didn't seem to hate him, so there was a good chance of it. He felt the eyes of all the shinobi boring into his back like nails in wood, he couldn't feel any negative feelings in the stairs, but it was very unnerving. When he looked around he noticed that the looks were curious. 
all of a sudden, he realized what the curious looks were for. A rock suddenly came flying at him from a random civilian and was about to hit him when the sand shot out of the gourd and blocked it. He turned his body to see the mob of villagers from before, out of breath but still there. Don't even go to school with our children, you demon one person yelled out. You'll just corrupt the demon spawn another yelled. My child will not be corrupted by you. You stupid demon another one yelled out. All the shinobi and their children then looked at Naruto, curious what his reaction would be, while sending angry glances at the mob. Some of the looks really caught his eyes, from the black-haired people he saw the older one looking at him with a sympathetic look, and the younger one looking at him curiously. He lowered his head and walked into the building, ignoring the next few dozen rocks that were thrown and stopped by the sand. When he entered the classroom he noticed barely anyone was in the room at the time, he walked up to the back row and sat down waiting for class to start. As he watched the kids come in he noticed many different looks that were sent his way. One boy with pineapple hair looked at him with a calculating expression, a boy who kept eating was looking at him curiously, the boy with black looked at him with sympathy and curiousness, also a girl with blonde hair looked at him in wonder, and then a girl with white eyes looking at him in slight curiousness. Then one minute later a boy with a dog and a boy with sunglasses walked in, the dog started to bark and growl at Naruto, while the other boy just gave him a curious glance and sat down. Five minutes passed then suddenly everyone heard a voice in the front of the room. What are you doing here? My mom told me not to be near a demon like you, her eye would be corrupted a girl with pink hair screamed while pointing at Naruto. Then Naruto had all eyes on him, some of the smart kids in class got up and ran over to him. Naruto just stared at them with his raccoon-like eyes, until one of them decided to speak. My parents said that too, but he doesn't seem demonic to me. He is as scary as a kitten with these whiskers and eyes and all one of them said, making some of the people in the class laugh. He doesn't seem like he could hurt me at all. Huh, dope one of the other kids said and cocked back his arm and threw it forward, planning on flattening Naruto. But that's not what happened. The sand in the gourd shot out and blocked the punch, and everyone in the room gasped, even the kids that were outside when the sand was used the first time. Automatically, the sand pushed the boy back and flew back into the gourd. I would suggest you not do that again, or the sand will attack, Naruto said with a leer in his voice, after spending a few years learning how to use the sand he learned that it automatically protects him and would attack if necessary. HMPH, nice trick done, but let's see you do that again the boy said, then threw forward another punch. The sand shot out of the gourd and attacked the boy, sending him flying toward the other well after being thrown back. Naruto got up from his seat and walked halfway to the boy. A.N. I am making Naruto semi-normal, having more biju in him affects him a little bit. He will otherwise be a normal happy Naruto, but he will also have the side you just saw, which is when he gets mad. I said, don't do that again or the sand would attack, you should have listened to me, Naruto said with another leer in his voice, while narrowing his eyes, sand swirling around his feet like a wave in the ocean. He then walked back to his seat and sat down, waiting for the teacher to come in. No one said much after that, no one even dared, who was this guy? He's not normal there is something about him I can't put my finger on, the pineapple-haired boy thought. After five more minutes the teachers came in, one had his brown hair and a ponytail and a scar in his nose, while the other had white hair. Naruto couldn't help but notice the second instructor giving him a dirty look, it unnerved him greatly. A.N. In the next part only the main characters are important, so I'll skip the other kids. Hello. I am your new instructor at Ruka Yamino, and this is my assistant Mizuki. Now, we are going to go around the room so stand up and say your name, birthday, age, likes and dislikes, and goals or dreams. Aruka finished and pointed to the pineapple-haired kid. My name is Shikamaru Nara, my birthday is September 22, I'm 8 years old, I like to watch clouds and play shogi, and I want to become the clan head of the Nara clan. Shikamaru finished in a bored tone and sat back down. Okay, you next Aruka said, pointing to the hungry kid beside Shikamaru. Okay, my name is Choji Akimichi, my birthday is May 1, I'm 8 years old, I like to eat and play with Shikamaru, I dislike the people who call me fat, and my dream is to become the clan head of the Akimichi clan. Chaoji finished, sitting down to eat more chips. Next Adaruka said. My name is Sasuke Chiha, my birthday is July 23, I'm 8 years old, I like to train and learn new things, I hate fangirls, and my dream is to unlock my Sharingan and become the head of the Achiha clan. Sasuke finished and sat down. Next, Uparuka said. My name is Ino Yamanaka, my birthday is September 23, I'm 8 years old, I like to play with Sakura and pick flowers, and my dream is to become the head of the Yamanaka clan. Ino finished and sat down. Next, Uparuka said. My name is Sakura Haruno, my birthday is March 28, I'm 8 years old, I like to play with Ino, I dislike bullies, and I want to be as good a ninja as Tsunade Senju Sakura finished and sat down. Next Adaruka said. 
My name is Kiba Inuzuka and this is Akamaru. My birthday is July 7, I'm 8 years old, I like to play with Akamaru and train, and I want to become the head of the Inuzuka clan. Kiba finished and sat down. Next to Ruka said. My name is H. Hin Hinata H. Hai Uga. my birthday is December 27, I am 8 years old, I like to see cook, I want to G grow up to be the H. H. Hai Uga clan head. Hinata stuttered, then sat down. Next. I am Shino Aburam, and I'm 8 years old. Shino said, causing everyone to sweat. He didn't talk much, did he? Okay, next. Aruka said. Everyone turned to see what he said in curiosity. Naruto stood up and started. I am Naruto Uzumaki, my birthday is October 10, I'm 8 years old, I like Raymond and training, I dislike bullies and the stupid people who call me a demon, and I want to be Hokujen oh who my parents were Naruto finished and sat down, everyone had their mouths agape. Well he's grown in a strange way, Hiroka thought upon hearing Naruto's goals. Wait a minute, what was it that happened 8 years ago on October 10, I know something happened Shikamaru thought, trying to remember what he heard happened that day. Oh yeah. I have to get the assignments for today. Me and Mizuki will be right, back. Aruka said as he and Mizuki left the room to get the day's lesson plan and homework. Once they were out of the room some of the kids thought to speak up. Ha. Like a baka like you could become Hokage. Your parents probably abandoned you the day you were born. Like anyone could love you. Your parents were probably stupid the boy said that hit Naruto at the core. Anything else he could take but not when they insulted his parents. Naruto got up and walked to the kid's side and said in a harsh voice. No, you're wrong, my parents didn't abandon me. They died the day I was born. You made a big mistake to insult someone's family. Naruto said. What's that? I couldn't hear you, over your meowing. Someone like you could be scary, the boy said as he stood up. Some of the kids laughed, but a few knew it was wiser not to laugh. This is going to end badly. Heck, I don't blame Naruto, I would probably act the same Shikamaru, Chaoji, Ino, Sasuke, Shino, Hinata, and Kiba thought at the same time. While this was going on Akamaru and Shino's bugs were telling Kiba and Shino the same thing. This is not going to end well. That blonde boy smells funny like 10 different things. One is him and the others the bugs and Akamaru told their master friend. The boy cocked back his fist and was about to punch Naruto when Naruto took a step back and said again. I wouldn't do that if I were you, the sand will attack if needed, Naruto said, actually worried for the kid's safety if he didn't leave the sand alone. Yeah right. Like the sand has a mind of its does it. PFFT ya, uh, right the kid started to throw his fist forward when Shikamaru jumped in the way and grabbed his fist. I would suggest you take his advice, if you haven't noticed it yet, he is truly worried about your safety. Shikamaru said, looking at Naruto who had a worried look on his face. He's right, the sand moves on its own unless I tell it otherwise. I would never attack unless you forced me to, but the sand is a different story, it moves to protect me on its own, if someone doesn't leave it attacks with intent to kill. Naruto, said the last part darkly which sent a shiver down everyone's spines. Thank you Shikamaru, you possibly just saved this baka's life. Naruto said, and smiled which made Shikamaru smile. Then everyone went back to their seats as Aruka came in with papers. Again, Naruto couldn't help but notice the glare he got from Mizuki. Okay class, today we'll just be going over something that's really easy, Iruka started before Mizuki threw a pencil at Naruto, whose sand just blocked it. Iruka quickly glared at Mizuki who was smiling like a maniac. A.N. Sorry, I want to make Mizuki look like a maniac because he kind of is, and I would think he would try to ruin Naruto's school life. Mizuki. What is the meaning of this Iruka asked, making everyone look at Mizuki who looked slightly crazed. Why don't we go over that thing Mizuki said, throwing a kunai which was just blocked by Naruto's sand. Naruto had a feeling this would happen, so he just laid his head down on his desk and pretended to not care. He let his attention slip for a few seconds and regretted it. When Mizuki saw that Naruto's attention had gone somewhere else he threw a shuriken at Naruto, everyone thought he made the sand protect him, and were shocked when the sand still flew to block the attack, alerting Naruto to the attack. Um, are you done yet? I have had attempts on my life before and it hasn't done a thing. Also, if you don't stop attacking me, my sand will attack you, and I won't be able to stop it. Naruto said seriously. Yeah right. Sand doesn't have a mind of its own. If it attacks at you the demon who will be commanding it Mizuki said, everyone then looked at Naruto. Yeah, the demon huh? The village demon. That's what everyone calls me, and I don't know why. By the way you bakas have treated me all my life you're demons. Why am I a demon? Do you have the proof Naruto asked, getting really pissed off, and anyone could see it. Because, 8 years ago Mizuki started before being cut off by Aruka. Mizuki. Come with me to the Hokage. Everyone, you're dismissed. Aruka said angrily as he pulled Mizuki out of the room with him. Well that was weird everyone thought, then turned to Naruto who was sitting with his head hung, bangs covering his eyes. 
everyone except Shikamaru, Ino, Chaoji, Sasuke, Hinata, Shino, and Kiba left the room. The sand then circled over Naruto like an umbrella, and he started to cry silently, but anyone in the room could see he was crying. Slowly Shikamaru walked up to him and put a hand on his shoulder, Naruto looked up to see Shikamaru standing over him. After Shikamaru, everyone else walked up to Naruto as well trying to cheer him up. By the way Naruto, what was Mizuki going on about 8 years ago Kiba asked, and everyone nodded. I don't know, no one ever told me, they just always called me a demon, but I don't know why dot Naruto said sadly, then Kiba had an idea. Well, Akamau says that you smell like a raccoon, cat, turtle, gorilla, horse, slug, bug, ram, and a fox all in one dot everyone in and out of Naruto's head sweat dropped. Um should I take that as a compliment Naruto asked stifling laughter, making everyone laugh. I don't know but that might be why they call you a demon. Kiba suggested, and Shikamaru nodded. Or it could be that sand rushes to protect you. Shikamaru said, smirking, which caused everyone to laugh. Do you guys want to go to my family's BBQ shop? Chaoji asked, everyone nodded except Naruto. Will they allow me in? Most places kick me out saying they don't need a demon ruining business, Naruto said, everyone looked at him sympathetically. Mom and dad will and if they don't I'll refuse to work Chaoji said, and Naruto perked up. Does this mean we're all friends Naruto asked, looking around at everyone else. Yeah. We're friends they all said, then went to eat BBQ. After talking over the BBQ they all decided they would hang out the next day since it was cancelled because of Mizuki. Now Naruto was at home waiting for them to arrive so they could all hang out together. After a few minutes of waiting he finally heard a knock at his door, he ran through the house to the door and opened it. When he looked out the door he saw that everyone was staring at some of the harsh words that were written on the walls of his apartment, words that called him a demon. When they finally realized Naruto had answered, they looked at him with worried expressions. Naruto, are you even okay with this Shikamaru asked slowly, unsure what else to say. Well, I'm not okay with how they treat me, but what can I do Naruto said nonchalantly, motioning them all inside. They all walked in and gasped because Naruto's apartment was so low on furniture. Naruto, this is where you live Ino asked angrily. Yeah dot Naruto said, leading them into the kitchen. Are any of you hungry Naruto asked and everyone nodded. Okay, what flavor Raymond do you want Naruto asked and everyone looked confused. The message ringing in their minds, they all jumped around the kitchen and found nothing but Raymond, bread and milk. Is Raymond all you have Kiba asked, hearing the answer. Yeah, it's all I can afford, usually they'll overpriced everything else. Naruto said, and everyone had the same thought. I'm going to have to talk to my parents tonight. They all thought, angry at how Naruto was treated. Hey guys, why don't we go shopping? Ino asked, everyone nodded. Five minutes later. Shikamaru, Chaoji, Ino, Sasuke, Shino, Hinata, and Kiba were all walking up the street with Naruto heading to Ino's favorite clothing store. All of them could feel the glares being sent towards Naruto and were extremely unnerved by it. Suddenly they were all stopped when a mob of civilians and a few ninja walked in front of them, all of them looked at Naruto who had a look of fear on his face. So the demon decided to possess some clan heirs to get away with walking on our streets, pathetic. One of the villagers said menacingly. All the kids started to back up, scared. Oh so the demon has some little friends eh, demon? I'm guessing we'll have to kill them too they're corrupted. One drunk ninja said, and all the kids gasped and looked at Naruto, who looked like he was going to go on a massacre. What did you say Naruto asked, and the villagers snickered. Oh so the demon likes his little friends does he? All the kids looked at Naruto, who was clenching his fists in anger. His raccoon-like eyes glaring evilly at the mob. Naruto, you're not a demon. Don't listen to them Shikamaru said. No, I'm not a demon, but no one insults my friends, Naruto said darkly, his hair covering his eyes. Now die demon. We'll finish what the fourth started one of the ninja yelled, then threw a kunai at Naruto which was just blocked by the sand. Nice, but can you block, this the man ran at Naruto and tried to kick, only to be stopped by the sand. You should all know by now the sand automatically protects me, and if you keep hitting me, you'll die. Naruto said darkly with a hint of sadness at the idea of death. You're lying and we know, it the man yelled and tried to attack Naruto again, but it went wrong. This time, Naruto narrowly dodged and started to run. Everyone else just followed, the other kids caught up with him and knew he was probably running for his life. Naruto. I think we should get help Shikamaru yelled. Who would get there in time? Just go. I don't want you guys to get hurt if they turn on you Naruto yelled back. But what about you Hinata asked. I've put up with this every day of my life Naruto yelled, and with that he ran faster leading the crowd away. One hour later. All the kids were waiting at Naruto's house waiting for him to return, they didn't care if they had to wait all night. Lucky for them Naruto forgot to lock the door when they left. After a long hour of waiting they heard the door open and shut, they quickly ran to the door, only to find a man with gravity-defying white hair and a mask. Hey, what are you guys doing here Kakashi asked. 
We were hanging out with Naruto, we were going to a store when some people came up and said things. Then he had to lure them away. We couldn't convince him to get help, he just ran trying to get them away from us. Kiba said, Kakashi noticed the reluctance in Kiba's voice at the word things. Judging by your tone, I'm guessing they mentioned killing him and who he corrupted Kakashi asked. Gaining nods from them all. Well I don't care if they think he's a demon. He is still Naruto. He's not a demon Shikamaru said, gaining nods from everyone else. I agree, sometimes hate can blind people by the way, I'm Kakashi. Kakashi said, gaining nods from the kids. At least he won't be too hurt, as long as he has that sand. Kakashi said, earning a curious look from Shikamaru. Wait, why does the sand protect him? Shikamaru asked, earning a sigh from Kakashi. It's a long story, but it's a story Naruto will have to tell you when he figures out of course. Kakashi said. His hole is one big secret hidden from him isn't it, Shikamaru asked in a deadpan tone, and Kakashi nodded. Yeah basically dot was all Kakashi could say before they heard the door open slowly. They all turned and found a bruised and bloody Naruto. Naruto then fell to his hands and knees, coughing, then they noticed he seemed to be startled. Naruto. What happened Kakashi asked, running to Naruto's side. All the other kids in the room just stood there stunned, was this how Naruto came home every day? Was this how he was treated daily? Naruto, are you okay Shikamaru asked. The mob kept following me and I ended up in a dead end, then they got close, and the sand attacked I hate it when people don't take my warnings seriously, Naruto said, making all the kids go pale. Don't worry guys, it's happened before. People really should listen to his warnings about the sand, it has a bit of a mind of its own. Kakashi said mysteriously causing everyone in the room to go into an eyebrow twitching fit. Anyway Naruto got cleaned up okay Kakashi said, Naruto nodded and walked to the bathroom. Kakashi then turned to the children. And you guys promise me that you won't treat Naruto like the other villagers do. When he was born, I promised his parents I would protect him, and I don't feel like I'm doing a very good job. Kakashi said sadly. Actually I think you're doing all you can do. Shikamaru said, smiling. I promise. All the kids said at once. He'll be out in a little bit, do you want to go with us to Raymond? Kakashi asked, and everyone nodded. To be honest, I feel kind of like a father to him, even if I only come when I can't find him, actually, he doesn't even know my name. Kakashi said, making everyone nod. 25 minutes later. Raymond Naruto said excitedly, Raymond always seemed to help him forget his day. About 20 Raymond bowls later and counting they all just sat and watched with odd expressions, as Naruto was able to keep up with Choji in an eating contest. Where does all that food go Sasu whispered to Kakashi and Shikamaru, who chuckled. The black hole Kakashi and Shikamaru said at the same time, looked at each other, then laughed. Are they ever going to stop eating? They aren't slowing down, I think they're going faster Kiba whispered back to everyone while watching Choji and Naruto down 5 more bowls. Don't worry, they'll stop eventually I hope. Kakashi said, earning a sweat drop from everyone else. 50 bowls later. Tauji and Naruto finally stopped eating to everyone's relief, then they all went home because they had school the next day. A.N. Sorry for the jump, basically Mizuki mellowed out, and everyone turned to what they were in the first few episodes of Naruto, everyone kind of went their own way. Four years later. Naruto was now 12 years old, and the graduation exams were today, and he had a feeling he was going to fail with the bunshin, he had decided he had too much chakra to do a normal bunshin, and he didn't know any other cloning techniques. He was currently walking to the academy, but now he doesn't get a lot of abuse due to rumors like, the demon is getting stronger and all that. Not that he was complaining. When he finally arrived at the academy he was feeling excited and nervous at the same time. Well, we'll see how this goes, Naruto muttered to himself. 30 minutes later. You failed Aruka yelled, causing Naruto to lower his head and walk out. After all the tests were done Naruto was sitting on a swing across from the academy, watching as all his friends and classmates were congratulated by happy parents. Both of which he never had, suddenly he felt his sand start to wrap around him in a tender embrace, and he accepted it. Then he heard someone approaching, he quickly turned his head to see Mizuki. Naruto, I have a second test and if you pass the test you'll graduate Mizuki said and started explaining his plans. In Naruto's mind. They were watching the whole conversation and were debating what to do. I say we bring him in here. Admit it, we're all starting to like this kid Shukaku said, and all the others nodded. We may like him but what about this Mizuki? I'm getting really bad vibes from him. Karama said, making all the others nod again. That may be true, but it might be for the better why don't we see how this plays out, then decide Matatabi suggested, earning an agreement from everyone. Outside Naruto's mind. Ok Mizuki sensei if I can pass I'll do anything Naruto said, then ran off. Later that night, forest. Naruto was panting heavily after training with one of the in the forbidden scroll when he heard someone coming. He looked up to see an angry Ruka, something not even a dead person wanted to see. 
Naruto, what are you doing with the forbidden scroll? Aruka asked, pissed off. I finished the test. Now do I become a genin? Naruto asked, confusing Aruka. Where did you get that idea? Aruka asked, fearing the answer. Izuki sensei told me. He told me about the scroll in this place, Naruto said, finally putting together the pieces when suddenly a lot of shuriken flew into Aruka, pinning him to a wall. Why Mizuki? Why would you do this? Aruka asked. Power. All I want is power, Mizuki said. You, you lied to me, Naruto complained, then Mizuki started to chuckle. Oh, you want to know who's really lying? Mizuki started. No, Mizuki. It's forbidden, Aruka yelled, but Mizuki continued. They've been lying to you your whole life, 12 years ago the Kaiubi attacked our village, and the fourth sealed it into you. You are the nine-tailed fox. Die Naruto Mizuki said, using Naruto's shock days to throw the shuriken. The shuriken just bounced off the sand that shot up, bringing Naruto back to reality. Naruto then made a hand sign and molded his chakra. Why try it? I can destroy you instantly Mizuki stated. Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto yelled, and 5,000 clones appeared. H how so much chakra Ruka and Mizuki thought at the same time. Are you coming or not all the clones asked in unison. Then all the clones beat up Mizuki till he was an inch from death. Naruto dispelled all the clones, and Naruka came up to him. Naruto, close your eyes. Aruka said, Naruto closed his eyes, when he opened them Aruka's headband was gone. Congratulations Naruto, you graduate Aruka said happily. Aruka sensei Naruto said as he dogpiled Aruka. Later that day. Naruto had just gotten home and was happy about his new ninja status. Naruto decided he had better get some sleep since he hadn't slept for a while, he laid down, and once his head hit the pillow he was in a sewer. In Naruto's mind. Naruto looked around and found he was inside a sewer, confused, he started to walk around. Where the hell am I Naruto asked out loud, not expecting an answer until. In your mind follow my voice kit. Naruto recognized the voice and started walking toward the source, and eventually found himself in a large room with nine cages. Hello kid, so you finally made it here, Kurama said Naruto saw the fox impaled, then nearly screamed. Your TT the Kaiubi Naruto said, on the verge of passing out from fear. Uh oh, Kurama, why did you have to scare the kid like that Matatabi said. Kurama. You scared the poor kid. I can already see him wetting his pants Asobu said, coming out of the shadows. Kurama. You scared the shit out of him Jayuki said. You scared him, Kurama the rest of the voices protested. Well sorry. I didn't mean to Kurama said in his defense. Naruto looked around to see eight other figures come out of the shadows, each with more tails than the last. He started to pale farther, on the verge of peeing his pants. Don't be scared kid, we can't hurt you, and we actually like you. Shukaku said, it didn't calm Naruto one bit. Shukaku I don't think talking is going to help here, Jimei said. Maybe if we leave him be for a little bit sake and asked, barely anyone agreed. No, I think he just needs to get used to us first. Son Goku said, and some of the beasts frowned. He's not like an animal son. Kakuo said in a deadpan voice. Maybe he just needs some space. Jayuki asked, and all the Biju looked back at Naruto who was on the ground holding his knees, rocking back and forth. The sight made some of the Biju sweat drop. Um, you okay there? Kid Kurama asked in a worried and curious tone. Do you think he looks okay? Kurama Shukaku asked in a sarcastic tone of voice. After a few minutes of them watching Naruto he finally calmed down and stood up, looking all around the room with his raccoon-like eyes. Who are you all, where are we, and why are we here Naruto asked in a semi-scared tone. Okay guys, how about we go from 1 to 9 Jimei asked, and everyone nodded. I am number 1, Shukaku. Shukaku said. I am number 2, Matatabi. Matatabi said. I am number 3, Isobu. Isobu said. I am number 4, Son Goku. Son Goku said. I am number 5, Kakuo. Kakuo said. I am number 6, Seiken. Seiken said. I am number 7, Jimei. Jimei said. I am number 8, Jayuki. Jayuki said. And I am number 9, Kurama. Kurama said smugly, causing some of the beasts to sweat drop. We are the tailed beasts or Bijuu and we are sealed inside you. Kurama said. We are in your mind right now. Shukaku continued. And we wanted to talk to you and let you know of our existence. Jimei finished. How are all of you here? Mizuki said I only had Kayu Kurama. Naruto asked, confused. Well Kurama was a total baka and dragged us into the sea with him. We're all connected, he had the smart idea of dragging one fourth of our souls in with him. He thought it would kill you and by a miracle it didn't. Jayuki said, all of them sending glares at Kurama, who was now sweating under the attention. Well, why would you like me and not your own personal Jinchuriki? Naruto asked. Actually, we really don't know why after a while we just kind of like you, Shukaku stated. Okay, do you guys have something to do with some of my powers Naruto asked, and the beast smiled. 
I'm glad you caught on, kid, now we can tell you the gifts we gave you. Jayuki said, smiling. What? You mean like the sand Naruto asked, and some of the Bijuu chuckled at the look on his face. Just listen closely, Jayuki finished and they started to tell him about their powers. I have given you control over sand and protection. Also the rings around your eyes are from me. Shukaku said. I have given you agility and some cunning, also the whiskers might be my fault. Matatabi said. I have given you a water affinity and slight control over water. Asobu said, with what looked like a smile on his face, which looked perverted to Naruto. I have given you an affinity to fire and slight control over fire. Also, if you have an affinity to earth you might be able to use lava release. Son Goku said in a matter-of-fact tone. I have given you some stamina, but Kurama also gave you that. Kakyo said, spitting out Kaiubi's real name, causing Kurama to growl. I have given you a small calming aura, so you can think calmly in a bad situation. Seiken said. I have given you better vision than most people would have. Jame said proudly. I have given you a strong confident attitude. You didn't really need it, but this way it will be harder than it was before to break you. Jayuki said knowingly. I have given you fast healing, stamina, and the whiskers are possibly my fault too. Kurama said. And we have all given you some chakra. They all said in unison. T thank you Naruto said, causing some of the Bijuu to gasp internally, did a human just thank a tailed beast. You're welcome kid. All nine Bijuu said in unison. Okay so what do we do now Naruto asked. Some of the Bijuu then took on thinking faces which made Naruto chuckle a little. Well now, we let you wake up out of your mind, it's tomorrow already. You were exhausted from all those clones. Karama said, then Naruto left his mindscape and opened his eyes to see his bedroom. Was it just a dream? It couldn't have been Naruto thought and was answered by multiple voices in his head. No, it wasn't a dream kid. All nine Bijuu yelled into Naruto's head, making him jump out of his bed. Okay, there has got to be a hint when you guys talk to me he said out loud, then heard the voices in his head, but this time it was softer. Sorry, we forgot that it might be loud, and don't talk out loud. Just think of something and we'll hear it. We don't want people thinking you've gone mad all nine of them said in unison. Okay, and how the hell are you all talking in unison Naruto thought to them. I don't know Kurama said, and Naruto could feel the fox looking around him, creeped out. Naruto had to stifle a chuckle at the fox's antics, and he went to get ready for the day. One week later. The week went by really fast for Naruto, all he did was his normal routine every day. While he was submitting a photo to the Hokage he met his grandson Kanohamaru boy, who ended up calling him boss. They then became really good friends and rivals for the Hokage title. Naruto could now see the academy in sight and started to slow into a walk. When Naruto walked into the classroom he got a lot of attention, most of the kids were confused and angry. Some were surprised and others were laughing. Naruto went to the middle row and sat down, laid his head down, and played with his headband, while talking to his tenants in his head. Don't worry about what they think, kid, they're just a bunch of bakas. Asobu said, trying to get Naruto's mind off the kids in the room. Okay, well I guess they will be messing with the future Hokage. Naruto thought, internally grinning making everyone else in his head smile. That's right you go get him Kid Kurama said, trying to give a confidence boost to Naruto, it worked. Suddenly Naruto felt a shadow appear over him, and looked up to see the kid who always made fun of him. Why would they let a raccoon freak like you graduate? Hadoub the kid said and brought back a fist to punch Naruto, but of course, as usual it was stopped by his sand. That just made the kid angrier, and he kept trying to punch and kick Naruto. Don't you ever drop your guard, raccoon freak. Stop using sand the boy yelled at Naruto and Naruto frowned. You know I can't stop the sand from protecting me, it's not me doing it, I do it on its own Naruto said, hoping the boy would stop, he started picking up the pace on the attacks. I know you're lying, that's bullshit. Sand can't think and move on its own the boy yelled, getting angrier because he couldn't hit the dope. Okay if you want to see me control it, watch this. Naruto said with an evil grin. Naruto commanded the sand to grab the boy's ankle and put him in his seat, when the sand was done the kid was just watching wide-eyed. Then he turned back to Naruto and pointed at him. Raccoon-eyed freak he yelled, this made Naruto feel really bad, but that ended when he heard. It's okay kid, actually for your pretty normal. Kurama said, and everyone else in Naruto's head nodded. Thanks Kurama, I just wish they wouldn't voice their thoughts, Naruto thought back. Then everyone heard running up the hall and into the classroom, no one bothered to turn around because they already knew who it was. I'm the first Eno pig. Sasuke's mind Sakura yelled, enraging Eno. Yeah right forehead. Like you would like you Eno yelled back. Then both Eno and Sakura looked towards Naruto, Naruto then turned around and saw what they were looking at. Sasuke sat there in his brooding position, contemplating how to kill his brother. Shit kid, you're screwed all the Bijuu in Naruto's head said frantically, knowing what would happen next. Hell, I'm screwed, Naruto thought knowing he would just be beaten by fangirls. 
Sakura started to run toward Sasuke and was about to push Naruto out of the way when the sand shot up and blocked her arm. Baka. Will you knock it off with the sand and move Sakura screeched, causing everyone to look towards her. Why can't they just get that it automatically protects me and I'm not controlling it Naruto thought and the Bijuu nodded. They just can't get what they don't understand Matatabi said. Yeah, I know but it's so annoying Naruto thought back and all the Bijuu nodded in agreement. As I've said before I can't stop the sand from protecting me Naruto yelled back, pissed off. Yeah right Baka. You're lying. You control sand so you should be able to stop the Sakura yelled back. Then let me go to sleep, then try to hit me. Let's see if the sand still protects me. Naruto said in a challenging voice. Fine. Then you'll have to move and I'll get to sit next to Sasuke Sakura said. Five minutes later. Naruto was out cold and snoring, everyone in the room watching. Is he really asleep Sakura asked Ino, who nodded. Okay, I'll teach this Baka a lesson for lying Sakura whispered. With everyone watching intently, she walked up to Naruto who was still sleeping and tried to kick him in the face. Everyone in the room went wide-eyed as the sand still shot out of the container to block her kick. What the hell everyone muttered. Another kid came up and tried to punch Naruto in the back, the sand blocked it again. As so the sand really does protect him all of them whispered, Naruto continued to snore softly. Then Naruto, feeling his gourd fill up again, woke up again and opened his eyes. He rubbed his eyes and looked around, everyone was staring at him wide-eyed. What? I told you before, the sand protects me. Naruto said in a matter-of-fact tone. Freak some of the kids called out. Even some others called out. Parakunais. Why become a ninja? Why try to become Hokage? No one will ever accept you as a Hokage another called out. Naruto's raccoon-like eyes started to get a dark look in them, no one insults his dream. I will be Hokage, you just watch, Naruto said slowly. Now move Baka. I don't care. I'm sitting next to Sasuke Sakura said she pushed him so hard this time, even with the sand he was pushed out of his seat. No. I'm sitting next to Sasuke no yelled, grabbing Sakura's arm. Thump. All the fangirls looked at Sasuke to see Naruto sitting on the table staring at him. Naruto. Hey, stop glaring at Sasuke Sakura yelled. I have a right to glare, you just kicked me out of my seat Naruto thought, and everyone agreed. Then the kid behind Naruto had an idea. Maybe I can make the girls try to beat him up, I can't just punch him into Sasuke or maybe I can, it won't exactly be a threat the kid thought, then put his plan into action. He called out to Naruto, and when Naruto turned he scared him and pushed him into Sasuke. Everyone heard a smooching sound and looked at Naruto and Sasuke who were now holding their throats, gagging and heaving. I will get you Naruto, Sasuke said ferociously between gagging. Naruto. Run. It's a pack of angry fangirls. Run for your life all the Bijuu in Naruto's head were screaming, he then turned around and saw they were right. Danger oh no, he muttered under his breath before the girls pounced on him, trying to beat past the sand. Then sand then morphed around Naruto, making a giant shell of sand around him. A.N. The ball of sand is like Gara's during the Chunin exams, but it doesn't attack, it just sits there, and they are hopelessly hitting it with no luck. It's like a turtle shell except he can control it. After a few minutes, Naruto felt the girls walking away from his shell and made a little bit of it crumble down revealing his eyes. He quickly looked to see the fangirls had calmed down and made the rest of it crumble away. Then he quickly went back to his seat and sat down only to hear the comment. Hey. Raccoon eyes finally came out of hiding Naruto looked around to see the fangirls giving him death glares, he sighed and laid his head on his arms. In the meeting room, A.N. You probably know who the Jounin are so I'll skip introductions. Wow, kids can be mean, Kurinai said. Yeah, Asuma said sadly. I just hope they don't piss him off too much one of these days, Kakashi commented, making everyone nod. Well anyway, let's get on with the meeting. Siratobi said. Back with Naruto, A.N. Just another fee, Naruto isn't crazy about Sakura because the Bijuu talked him out of it. So he won't be drooling on her in this. Okay, now here are the squads Aruka started. Squad 7, Naruto Yuzumaki, Sakura Haruno, and Sasuke Cha. Your sensei will be Kakashi Haddock. Haruka continued. Squad 8, Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburam. Your sensei will be Kurana Yuhi. Haruka continued. And Squad 10, Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka, and Chaoji Akamichi. Your sensei will be Asuma Suratobi Aruka finished. Now, after lunch your senseis will be here to get you. Aruka said and left the room. After lunch. These late Naruto said in an annoyed tone. We know. Shut up Baka Raccoon Sakura said. Okay, I'm about to strangle her. I get that I have raccoon eyes, but that doesn't mean it's weird Naruto thought fiercely. You know we're all a team now so we should get along like a normal team. Naruto said, glaring at them. How could I ever get along with you? You have raccoon eyes, whiskers, and sand protects you. 
Like anyone partly normal could never get along with you Sakura said. Naruto lowered his head, his eyes growing darker. Sakura, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Sasuke warned, sadly, Sakura didn't get the message. Why are you protecting that Baka? He's just a demon. Like anyone could love him Sakura said, no one noticed Naruto start to shake in fury. Naruto please calm down the Biju in Naruto's mind said they calmed him a little but not much. Then Sakura noticed that Naruto was trembling, sand swirling around him slightly. Am I making you mad? Am I reminding you that you're a demon? My mom said you were just a stupid demon Sakura said, the last part hit home, and Naruto snapped out of his seat, walking in front of Sakura. He glared at her and she just smirked, then Naruto left the room. Ha! The demon deserved it Sakura said, Sasuke just frowned. Meanwhile Naruto was storming up the hall to the bathroom, anywhere away from there. The Bijuu in his head were desperately trying to calm him down, but it was working slower than they hoped. Naruto please calm down Matatabi said. Naruto, just ignore that banshee she's loud and annoying as Sobu said. After a few minutes, Naruto finally decided to go back to the room, when he walked in he saw Sakura frowning over a brooding Sasuke. He continued to his seat and after a few minutes the door slid open. Hey, Team 7 Kakashi asked. You're late. And why do we have to have the demon on our team Sakura screeched the last comment irked Naruto and Kakashi, but only Naruto acted on it. I'm not a demon. What proof do you have Naruto asked. Well, your eyes, cheeks, and this dot Sakura said, during the last part she punched Naruto, only to have the sand block it. That doesn't mean I'm a demon. Have you actually tried to get to know me Naruto asked. No, but I'm not supposed to associate with demons. My mom said I would be corrupted Sakura said. At this point Naruto was getting really pissed and anyone could see it. His sand swirled around his feet and his eyes glared into her eyes, making her squirm under the attention. I'm going to have to explain to her that he's not a demon, if they pass that is, Kakashi thought about seeing how the conversation went. Okay, meet me on the roof. Kakashi said before shunshining away. Then Sakura took the chance to make one little snide comment. You know, we don't need a demon like you on our team. You'll just slow us down and corrupt us Sakura said, hoping Naruto would reply. What they didn't know was that Kakashi could still hear it by applying chakra to his ears. Naruto then stormed up to the roof with barely suppressed anger, and Sakura smirked, maybe it would be easier than she thought to get him off the team. When they finally arrived on the roof only Naruto noticed Kakashi eyeing Sakura angrily as they all sat down. Okay, now let's introduce ourselves, say your name, likes, dislikes, and dreams. Kakashi finished. Why don't you go first sensei Sakura asked. Alright, my name is Kakashi Haddock, I like and dislike many things, and I have never thought about my future. Kakashi finished. Okay, you first pinky. Kakashi said, making a tick mark appear on her forehead. I'm Sakura Haruno, I like Sasuke, the person I like is Sasuke, my dream is Sasuke, and I hate Naruto Sakura finished. The next emo. Kakashi said pointing to Sasuke. I'm not emo Sasuke yelled. I'm Sasuke Chiha, I hate a lot of things, and I don't really like anything. My ambition is to restore my clan and destroy a certain someone. Sasuke said darkly. Okay you next blondie. Kakashi said. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, I really like Raymond, and the Raymond Aruka sensei got me at the Ichiraku Raymond shop, I hate the three minutes it takes to cook Raymond, and people who think I'm a demon, and my dream is to be the greatest Hokage, then everyone will look up to me and treat me like somebody, somebody important Naruto finished with fire in his eyes. So you hate the whole village. And like you could be Hokage. No one will ever look up to you, it's not like you're important. You're just a demon who deserves to die. Sakura said smugly, Naruto grit his teeth, and Kakashi and Sasuke frowned. Actually all the ninja in the village know he's not a demon, he can become Hokage, the Hokage's grandson looks up to him, and he is important. Kakashi hissed out at Sakura, who just kept smirking. Ah, he's corrupted all of you to believe that. How is he special? He's just an evil demon who needs to die. Sakura said, smirking. If I were an evil demon you would all be dead by now wouldn't you? And you need to learn when to shut your mouth, if you even had a glimpse of what I go through every day, then you'd know you're the real demons. Naruto said before getting up and leaving. Sakura, later we need to talk. You don't treat your teammates like that. Kakashi said, sending her a glare, she just smirked. He's not my teammate. He's just a freak. I'll be glad when the village finally kills him, Sakura said, not getting the message she needed to shut up. Sakura. Enough Kakashi yelled, making her stop talking, but it didn't wipe the smirk off her face. Sakura, honestly, do you really believe Naruto is a demon? Kakashi asked. Yes, he deserves to die. My mom said that he'll corrupt anyone who knows him, and he'll kill us all. Sakura said. Sakura, he's not a demon. Can't you see the Kakashi asked her. He's just disguised, I don't see how he is important. 
he's a demon, he's not important, he just needs to be killed before he kills us Akura said. No, you're wrong. It's the villagers that are corrupted by hatred. Kakashi said. Whatever. Sakura said, ending the conversation. Well, meet me at training ground 3 tomorrow at 7 am, and don't eat, you'll puke. Kakashi said before going to look for Naruto. Meanwhile, with Naruto. Naruto was sitting in his kitchen thinking about what all Sakura said before he left when he heard his door opening and closing. He just sat and waited for the person to enter his kitchen, it was Kakashi. Hey, are you okay? Kakashi asked, clearly concerned about how he felt. No. I'm a container not a demon, why don't they get that Naruto asked angrily. Because, the demon they know is inside you was what killed their loved ones. They've been blinded by hatred. Kakashi said. Did you know I have all nine? Naruto asked, and Kakashi nodded. Yeah, but since you only have part of them there are still going to be other Jinchuriki out there. In fact, I think the one tails Jinchuriki from Sunagakur also has control over sand just like you do. Kakashi said, making Naruto smile. I just hope Sakura stops calling me a demon, I hated Naruto said angrily, making Kakashi nod. I know, it might be a while, but I think she'll come around, oh, and come to training ground 3 at 7 am and don't eat, you'll puke. Kakashi said, then disappeared into smoke. Great what do you guys think of this Naruto asked Biju. I think it's the bell test, I suggest you eat breakfast. Karama said, making everyone nod. Yeah, and it will also probably need teamwork too. Son Goku said, making them nod again. What will I do about Sakura? She'll probably just refuse. Naruto thought back. Use a hand and transform into Sasuke, ask her to work with you, then send another clone that looks like you after Sasuke and explain. Then at the last second, undo the henge, then she'll have no time to complain Asobu said, making all the biju nod. Okay, that sounds good, thanks guys Naruto thought before going to bed so he could get up early. Meanwhile with Sakura, A.N. I'm making Sakura start out thinking Naruto is a demon so he can prove he's not, I just really like the idea so sorry if I go too far with it. Sakura had gotten home a little while ago, and was now telling her parents about her day. I got paired with a demon, and I think Kakashi Sensei and Sasuke have been corrupted. Just like you said Sakura said, making her mother angry. You need to try to kill it tomorrow when you meet or else it might corrupt you too, it's just a demon, it doesn't deserve to live Sakura's father said. What if Kakashi Sensei or Sasuke try to protect it Sakura asked. Trust us, they'll be on the ground thanking you for killing it. Sakura's mother said. The next day, 7 am. All the soon-to-be genin were now waiting for their sensei, Sasuke was brooding, Naruto was spacing off, and Sakura was waiting for her chance to attack Naruto like her parents had instructed. He's just a demon, killing him would make everyone happy he's just corrupted everyone. They'll be thanking me for killing him before he could kill us. Sakura thought as she watched Naruto space off. Without either Naruto or Sasuke noticing she pulled out a kunai and lunged at Naruto, only to be blocked by the sand which brought Naruto back to reality. What the hell are you doing Naruto yelled, jumping back a few feet from Sakura. I'm going to kill you before you can kill the rest of us, today you're going to die, demon Sakura yelled and lunged again, only to be blocked by the sand. Have you gone insane Naruto screamed as she prepared to jump at him again. No, I'm doing what all of the villagers couldn't do. Die demon Sakura yelled and threw several shuriken at Naruto, which were just shot down by more sand. Sasuke sat off to the side, ignoring what was going on, he didn't care what happened to Naruto or Sakura, he only cared about killing his brother, Itachi. What are you talking about? I'm not a demon. Why can't you understand that Naruto yelled back, backing away slowly from Sakura. You're a demon. That's why everyone in the village wants you dead. That's why we all hate you Sakura said, making Naruto's mind go blank. All the beatings and suffering, all the hateful glares, the children's taunting, it all flashed back into his head at once, and something inside him snapped. He didn't care what happened to Sakura, she was trying to kill him, if he really needed to he would kill her, he didn't like the idea, but he couldn't have her constantly making attempts on his life. Naruto's eyes suddenly turned more menacing, Sakura noticed this and backed away. Naruto glared at her with his new menacing almost evil eyes, making her squirm under the attention. Sakura, if you really want to end my life then you'll have to fight me. I didn't want to do this, but it appears I have no choice but to fight you. Naruto said Sakura noticed that his voice changed, it sounded a little more menacing than before. There was no real change in it, it just seemed different. What they didn't know was that something inside Naruto snapped, and now he didn't care if he hurt her, he would survive. A.N. What I mean by more menacing and a little more evil, is that due to Sakura, his own teammate, turning on him something in him snapped, and now he's a little more like Gaara. Not as bad as Gara, but you will see him seeming, a little more like Gara, more demonic. Not evil, but demonic, or darker. Okay demon. Let's see if you really can beat me. You're just a demon so what could you possibly do? 
You were the dead last, you can't beat me Sakura said, trying to taunt Naruto. Book smarts aren't everything Sakura Naruto said in a menacing voice, his sand swirling around his feet. He then held out his hand and shot sand toward Sakura, wrapping her feet in sand, holding her down. What about strength? Can book smarts break you out of the sand's hold Naruto asked, then made the sand float back to him. Look, I don't want to fight you, but if I have to I will Naruto said Sakura just smirked and made a few bunshin. In the academy you couldn't even make one clone, how will you match the Sakura asked, thinking she had won until. Page bunshin no jutsu Naruto called out, making 10,000 solid clones. Holy mother of chakra all the bijuu in Naruto's head yelled out in disbelief at the same time. Holy mother of chakra everyone but Naruto thought, even Kakashi who had watched the whole fight go on and even before that. This is how I'll match it all the clones called out in unison. Ha. I guess you can do bunshin. But these are only illusions Sakura said, before she was punched in the face by a clone, sending her flying back. Wait they're real how Sakura screamed, all the Naruto's just chuckled. We are shadow clones, we are perfectly solid. All the clones said in unison. Then all the clones disappeared to reveal one Naruto, who didn't look tired at all. He walked up to Sakura, who was on the ground and looked at her. Look, I really don't want to fight you, but again I will if I have to. Naruto said, narrowing his raccoon-like eyes. Get away. You freak. You're a monster. Why don't you just die? Sakura yelled, jumping at Naruto to just be stopped by the sand. Then when the sand settled down again everyone saw tears running from Naruto's eyes. I said, why don't you just die? You're a demon freak Sakura yelled, throwing multiple kunai and shuriken at Naruto, only to be blocked by the sand. When she saw she couldn't kill him, she got up and ran home, ignoring the sobs she heard from Naruto. A demon, a freak, a monster, why? Why Naruto thought, hoping to hear an answer, he got none. The Bijuu didn't know what to say to help him, so they just stayed quiet. Naruto continued to cry, after a while of waiting Sasuke got tired of waiting for Kakashi and left, leaving Naruto sitting alone under a tree. Naruto just sat there and cradled his legs in a fetal position, the sand swirling around him on the ground in a protective manner. Uh oh, I think she broke him this time, Kakashi thought he jumped down and walked up to Naruto and acted like he just got there. Hey Naruto, where are Sasuke and Sakura Kakashi asked, at the mention of Sakura, a shudder went through Naruto and Kakashi internally sighed. Nice going Sakura, you finally broke him, Kakashi thought sarcastically. Kakashi went up to Naruto and sat down next to him, automatically the sand flew up in between them, ready to harden if Kakashi tried to attack. It's okay Shukaku, I'm not going to hurt Naruto. Kakashi whispered, and the sand settled back down to swirling around Naruto on the ground. Seeing this action made Kakashi curious. So the Bijuu actually like Naruto and try to protect him from harm, Kakashi thought in a questioning tone. Naruto then looked up at Kakashi with tear-strewn eyes. Why did she try to kill me? I knew she thought I was a demon, but why the assassination attempt? Aren't we teammates Naruto asked sadly, lowering his head again. I don't know why, but I know that I'm hoping she won't do it again. Kakashi said, making Naruto's head jerk up quickly. I'll see if they can all come back for the test tomorrow at the same time, ok Kakashi asked and Naruto nodded, then Kakashi disappeared to leave Naruto with his thoughts. Meanwhile with Sakura. I couldn't kill him, his sand was protecting him Sakura said to her parents, who were even more enraged than before. I have an idea, maybe if we wet his sand down Sakura's dad asked, and Sakura's mom nodded. Sakura, do you know any water her mom asked, gaining a nod from Sakura. Good, tomorrow wet down his sand, then he won't be able to use it Sakura's mom said. So are you sure when he dies Kakashi sensei and Sasuke will be free Sakura asked, her parents only nodded. The next day, 7 am. The next day, all the soon to be genin were waiting again for Kakashi, doing the same things they did yesterday. Sasuke was brooding, Naruto was spacing off but was more alert now, and Sakura was watching closely, waiting for her chance to strike again. Seeing her chance, she quickly threw some kunai at Naruto, making him jump back realizing what was happening. Sakura. Why do you keep doing this Naruto yelled. Sasuke just sat there watching what was going on. You're a demon and you have to die. If I kill you Kakashi sensei and Sasuke will be free from your corruption. Sakura said, shocking Naruto. Corruption. That's why you want to kill me? I haven't corrupted anyone Naruto yelled back. Well we'll see about that after I kill you Sakura said, and started the water, making Naruto's sand wet. Ugh, my sand Naruto muttered, looking at his now sluggish sand. Naruto, push more chakra into the sand, and it will dry. I don't know what a problem is, but I'm starting to see a really big problem here. Shikaku said. Naruto then pushed chakra into the sand, and it dried. Now Sakura screamed in anger that the demon wasn't easy to kill. Takura. Naruto answered simply. Sakura was getting even angrier by the minute. You're a demon. Why don't you just die? 
No one wants you around Sakura yelled, maybe he would just kill himself. Naruto lowered his head sadly, then looked straight into Sakura's eyes. I don't want to fight you. What keeps making you do this Naruto asked in a stern voice. Sakura didn't answer with the response he expected. The village. Everyone in the village hates your guts. I'm not going to let you corrupt me like you did Kakashi sensei and Sasuke Sakura yelled back, this shocked everyone else in the field, Kakashi who was watching in a tree, Sasuke who was watching the fight, and Naruto who was being called the demon. What are you talking about? I haven't corrupted anyone, and if you kill me it will still be murder Naruto yelled back. This caused Sakura to pause and stare at him. How would it still be murder? You're just a demon. Killing a demon wouldn't be murder Sakura said disbelievingly. I am a person too. If I wanted to kill any of you I would have done it a long time, ago Naruto said the last part made her step back, while the other two started to listen intently. No, you're lying. You have been waiting for the right moment to kill us all Sakura yelled in defense. Sakura, I don't know what to say to convince you to believe me. Even so, I don't want to fight you Naruto said in a fierce voice, making everyone flinch. Sakura just stood there stunned, was what the villagers said about the demon wrong. She kept thinking it over until Kakashi decided it was time to step in. Yo. Are you guys ready for the test Kakashi asked, walking up to them. Your late Sakura and Naruto yelled, and Sasuke just grunted. Then Kakashi went on to explain the bell test, after a few minutes he thought they were ready to begin. Start Kakashi yelled, and all three genin ran into the woods. Well, they know how to hide, Kakashi thought. Okay, now I just have to find Sakura and Sasuke Naruto thought, looking around. He then made four shadow clones and sent two to each of his teammates. Five minutes later Sasuke was by his side, and Sakura was being dragged against her will by two Narutos. Hey. Let me go. I'm not working with a demon Sakura said angrily until she saw Naruto and Sasuke staring at her angrily. Oh, hi Sasuke Sakura said, then glared at Naruto. Damn, girls can be a bitch Naruto thought, getting mental nods from all the biju. Naruto and Sasuke looked at each other, Sasuke nodded. Sakura, I don't care what you think about Naruto, he's not a demon. Now, we have to work together to get those bells Sasuke said, making Sakura pale. You really have been corrupted Sakura whispered, making both the boys frown and shake their heads. I'm starting to think she'll never come around she's hopeless Naruto thought, and some of the Bijuu nodded in agreement. Don't worry kid, if you save her life, then she'll have to believe you're not a demon Karama said, all of the Bijuu nodded. Sakura, here's the plan you can either cooperate or not, I made the plan so it's your choice it will work either way, Naruto said, then he spent the next 5 minutes explaining his plan. After a little while of waiting for the right moment, they put their plan into action. Okay Kakashi sensei, fight me one on one Naruto yelled from behind Kakashi, he turned to see Naruto standing there, sand swirling around his body. It did give off a slightly terrifying look, even Kakashi had to admit to that. Okay Naruto, we'll fight. Kakashi said as he pulled out an orange book, causing Naruto to gawk. Why are you reading a book Naruto asked, this distracted Kakashi and he looked up. Well, you probably won't even be able to touch me, so I thought I would catch up on some reading. Kakashi said calmly. Suddenly, multiple kunai flew towards Kakashi, courtesy of Sasuke. Kakashi turned and jumped back, only to be constricted to the ground by Naruto's sand, he forgot about Naruto for just one second, and it cost him this fight. Ha! Our plan worked, didn't it? Kakashi sensei Naruto yelled in excitement, the sand grabbed the bells and threw them to Sakura and Sasuke, who were now next to Naruto. What about you Naruto Sasuke asked, only to be cut off by Sakura. Ha! The demon knows he shouldn't be a ninja. Now me and Sasuke will be on the same team. Right Sasuke Sakura finished in a fangirlish tone. When she was done, Naruto couldn't hold back his anger any longer. Sakura I'm not a demon. If you don't get that through your head soon and shut up, I might really kill you like you thought, Naruto said, glaring at her with an evil glint in his eyes, the tone in his voice made everyone shudder and go silent. Okay you all pass. You're all now genin and we'll start our first mission tomorrow Kakashi said, making Naruto jump up and down, Sasuke smirked, and Sakura go pale. Why does the raccoon Baka pass? He's just stupid and will slow us down Sakura complained, making Naruto's mood drop again. Sakura, if I'm weak and will slow you down then how did I beat you, yesterday Naruto asked in a pissed off tone. Well, you're a demon. If you weren't a demon then I would have beaten you easily Sakura yelled, making everyone's eyebrows twitch a little bit. If she doesn't stop calling me a demon there is a strong possibility I'm going to kill her Naruto thought, and all the biju yelled in agreement. If she doesn't shut up soon I'll be happy to help you kill her Jayuki said, making all the other biju nod in agreement. I might have to have Sakura switch teams with someone else this is ridiculous, and she's obviously not going to give up, Kakashi thought, thinking of just who to switch Sakura with. 
maybe she could switch with that Hinata girl she likes Naruto, so they'll get along, and Sasuke will just warm up to her. She'd be better with this team with her by Akigen anyway, Kakashi thought to himself, knowing he would need to talk with Kurenai. Sakura, how would you like to switch teams with a girl named Hinata Kakashi asked, making Sakura think for a little bit. Well, Hinata never liked Sasuke, and if I change teams I would be away from Naruto, Sakura thought then nodded, making everyone on the team internally sigh in relief. Thank Kami. I thought I would have to live with her rants about me being a demon Naruto thought, making all Biju sigh in relief, they couldn't put up with her either. Okay, Sakura, come with me, there is someone I want to talk to, then we'll see about the team change. Kakashi said, then he and Sakura disappeared into smoke, leaving Sasuke and Naruto to wait. But Sakura and Kakashi. Sakura and Kakashi were walking into training ground 8, when they saw a very tired Hinata, Kiba, and Shino, along with a smiling Kurenai. When Kurenai felt them approach she walked up to them calmly. What's going on here Kakashi Kurenai said while lying Sakura. Well you see, we were all wondering if Sakura here could switch Hinata Kakashi said nervously, Kurenai automatically dropped her guard and motioned Hinata over. It's okay with me as long as Hinata agrees. Kurenai said simply. Hinata finally made it to the small group and looked up at Kurenai expectantly. Hinata, would you like to trade places with Sakura on Team 7 with Sasuke and Naruto Kurenai asked simply, and Hinata almost passed out at the thought. She simply nodded, trying to not look too eager. But why would Sakura want T to switch Hinata asked, genuinely curious. Kurenai and Hinata then turned to Sakura who was smirking. I don't want to be on the same team as that demon. I think he deserves to die. Sakura said plainly, making everyone's eyebrows twitch slightly. Hinata felt extreme anger at the girl for calling former teammate a demon, and her eyes suddenly got bulging veins around them, the Byakugan. Kurenai and Kakashi felt the chakra spike and looked down, only to see Hinata had activated her Byakugan subconsciously. Don't you dare call Naruto a demon Hinata said fiercely, making Kurenai raise an eyebrow. So she feels that strongly for Naruto, maybe it is a good idea to have her switch teams, Kurenai and Kakashi thought at the same time. Okay, so I'll take Sakura and you take Hinata. It's a deal. Kurenai said Kakashi and Hinata disappeared to the Hokage's tower to inform him. But Sasuke and Naruto, 30 minutes later. When do you think they'll be coming back? Sasuke asked in a bored tone, making Naruto look at him. I have a feeling they'll be back here soon, Naruto said calmly. The Okakashi said, popping out of smoke. H hello Hinata stuttered. Hey Hinata. So I'm guessing they agreed Naruto asked. Yes Naruto. I'm your new tea teammate Hinata said happily, 